Hello, I am Sunita. Welcome to my class. Here I am going to discuss JPSTR science topics according to the syllabus. Here the topic is current electricity. In this one, we will study about Kirchhoff's law, Wheatstone bridge and potentiometer. Let us study Kirchhoff first law, Kirchhoff current law, KCL or junction rule. This law is very very important. This one definitely they will ask in the exam. Definition of Kirchhoff first law. At any junction, the sum of current entering the junction is equal to the sum of current leaving the junction. Let us study first what is mean by a junction where three or more wires meet. Consider this is the example of a junction here. Here you can observe three wires. They are meeting at a single point. Therefore, always remember junction is nothing but where three or more wires they will meet at a single point. That one we will call it as a junction. Then let us verify here this A. This is not a junction because here only two wires they, will, they are meeting at a single point. Therefore, A it is not a junction then observe b here in the case of a b you can observe three wires they are meeting at a single point therefore b is a junction then c is not a junction because here also only two wires they are meeting at a single point therefore in general what is mean by a junction junction is nothing but where three or more wires they are meeting at a single point then then coming to kirchhoff first law at any junction the sum of current entering the junction is equal to sum of the current leaving the junction. Then here you can see the three wires they are meeting at a single point and here you can observe two current. Here one first current is having two ampere, second one is three ampere. These two currents they are entering into the junction then 5 ampere of current it is it is leaving the junction therefore add these two current 3 plus 2 it will be 5 ampere of current it is entering into the junction it will be equal to 5 ampere of current leaving the junction how much amount of current it is entering to the junction it will be equal to sum of the current leaving the junction then consider second example here. Here also you can observe I1, I2 are the two current entering into the junction. Then I3, I4 are the two currents leaving the junction. Therefore, according to Kirchhoff law, I1 plus I2, it will be equal to I3 plus I4. Then this law is based on the conservation of charge. Conservation of charge means charge can neither be created nor be destroyed. Amount of charge entering per unit time. Unit time means per second. How much amount of charge entering per second? It will be equal to amount of charge living per unit time. How much amount of charge it is living per second? This law we will call it as a Kirchhoff law. At any junction, the sum of the current entering the junction, it will be equal to sum of the current leaving the junction. This one you have to remember. Next one is Kirchhoff second law, Kirchhoff voltage law or loop rule. Another name for Kirchhoff second law is Kirchhoff voltage law or loop rule. Uh, definition of a Kirchhoff second law, the algebraic sum of change in potential around any closed loop is zero. Here summation of delta V it will be zero for a closed loop here. Closed loop is very very important. This one you have to remember. This Kirchhoff second law, it is valid only for a closed loop, not for a open loop. Consider this is a closed loop here. A, B, C, D is a closed loop. Then here you can see the potential difference across any two point is not same. It will be different. Then the potential difference in A, B is different. Then B, C is different. Then C, D is different. Then D, A is different. Then here you can observe a change in potential difference across two points. If you add all the potential difference in one, two, three, four cases, then you will get a net potential difference. It will be zero. This is valid in the case of a closed loop. Therefore, Kirchhoff second law status that the algebraic sum, summation of delta V, algebraic, algebraic sum is nothing but summation of delta V. The algebraic sum of change in potential around any closed loop is 0. 
around a any closed loop the change in potential it will be zero this is nothing but kirchhoff second law this law is based on conservation of energy you know conservation of energy means energy can neither be created nor be destroyed you can change energy from one form to another form then kirchhoff voltage law this law is based on the conservation of energy this point also very very important this one also you have to remember then once again kirchhoff second law is nothing but the algebraic sum of change in potential around any closed loop is zero this is valid only for a closed loop potential gain or potential drop let us learn how to choose a path in case of a resistance and for a cell let us consider the case in the case of a resistance here this is the external resistance then you know the formula delta v is equal to ir then here let us consider this is the direction of the current and this is the direction of the path if the direction of the current and direction of the path if both are in same direction in that case delta v is negative if the direction of the current is same as the direction of the path in that case delta v is negative then consider the other case this is the direction of the current then this is the direction of the path if the direction of the current is opposite to the direction of the path if both are in opposite direction in that case delta v a delta v is positive ir these two cases you have to remember in the case of a resistance then in the case of a cell this is the cell the bigger line it will indicate the positive terminal of a cell the smaller one it will indicate the negative terminal of a cell then positive terminal it is having higher potential negative terminal it is having low potential then you here you know delta v is e e is the emf of the cell in the case, case of a cell we will not consider the direction of the current then here we will consider the path direction if the path direction is from positive terminal to negative terminal or from higher potential to lower potential in that case delta v is minus e here consider the other case if the path direction if it is from negative terminal to positive terminal or from lower potential to higher potential of a cell in that case delta v is positive e these two cases are very very important in the case of a resistance or a cell how to choose a path this one you have to remember let us discuss here multiple choice question consider the following two statements first one kirchhoff junction law follows from the conservation of charge second statement kirchhoff loop law follows from the conservation of energy which of the following is correct both one and two are wrong second option option b first one is correct second one is wrong option c first one is wrong second one is correct option d both 1 and 2 are correct option d is the correct answer because kirchhoff junction law or kirchhoff first law it will follows the conservation of charge second one kirchhoff loop law or second law it will follow the conservation of energy let us solve the problem based on the kirchhoff law here you have to find the current i here the circuit is a closed loop then you have to follow the first step here the first step is choose the path where either you can consider in the clockwise direction also even you can choose anti clockwise direction also first step you have to choose the path here my convenient i am taking clockwise direction here this is a closed loop therefore here kirchhoff voltage law this is valid summation of delta v it will be zero this is valid in the case of a closed loop already i told here i am considering clockwise direction here then this is the direction of the current current it will be i then the direction of the current it will be in clockwise direction here consider the i will consider this as the starting point then here 
this is the cell in the cell here this is the negative terminal this is the positive terminal this is the direction of the path then this 3 volt is the emf of the cell already you know if the path if it is passing from negative terminal of the cell to positive terminal of the cell then that path you have to consider you have to consider the emf as a positive therefore plus 3 we can write here then here this is the the next one this is the resistor this is the direction of the current and this is the direction of the path if the direction of the current is same as the direction of the path in this case you you have to consider as a negative then he, here you know v is equal to i r i the current i we don't know the value write i as it is r value is 2 therefore minus 2 i here y minus means the direction of the current is same as the direction of the path if both the direction are same then then you have to consider negative then comes to come to another register resistor here 1 ohm here also the direction of the current it will be same as the direction of the path then therefore here we will consider again we will consider as a negative here i current we don't know i is i only then r is ohm, 1 ohm then 1 into i is i then here come to next resistor here also the direction of the current is same as the direction of the path therefore he here again it is negative then here resistance is 2 into i is 2i then next to next come to cell here here the path it will be from positive terminal to negative terminal here also the emf it will carry negative sign if the path if it is follow followed from positive terminal to negative terminal then it will takes negative sign therefore minus 9 again last resistor its ohm is 1 ohm here also direction of the current is same as the direction of the path therefore here also negative here 1 ohm 1 into i is minus i it will be 0 then here 3 minus 9 it will be minus 6 when you are having one positive one negative you have to do subtraction then the what value you will get then which one having the which one is the bigger number that sign you have to put here here 9 is the bigger one it contains negative sign therefore here you have to write negative minus when you are having all the negative sign then you have to add the numbers then minus 2 here minus 1 minus 3 minus 3 minus 2 minus 5 plus minus 1 again 6 minus 6 i it will be 0 then here 6 i it will be minus 6 then 6 ones are 6 ones are it will get cancelled then i and i value it will be minus 1 ampere this is the current value i it will be equal to minus 1 ampere in the circuit shown the cell a b have negligible resistance for VA it will be 12 volt, R1 it will be 500 ohm, R it will be 100 ohm. The galvanometer G shows no deflection. The value of VB is, you have to calculate the value of VB. Here you can consider two loops, this loop 1, here loop 2. Then here they are given, first VA it will be 12 volt, then R1 is 500 ohm, R is 100 ohm. Then already I told here you can consider two loops our convenient I consider in the clockwise direction even you can consider in anti-clockwise direction also. Here loop 1 here this is the cell the path it will move from negative terminal to positive terminal of the cell. Therefore here EMF you have to consider as a positive plus 12. Then here this is the direction of the current then this is the direction of the path both current and path they will follow the same direction therefore here negative sign then here V is equal to I R you know R is 500 I is high only 500 into high is 500 high then the current it will flow like this then here also the current and path direction both are same therefore negative sign here then 100 into high 100 i according to the formula v is equal to i r then this closed path it will be equal to 0 according to Kirchhoff's second law
500 plus 100 it will be equal to 600 high here minus sign it will come here then it will be equal to minus 12 then minus sign minus sign it will get cancelled therefore uh, we erase one step we wrote the final step here then i it will be equal to 12 by 600 then here 6 twos are 6 ones are you will get 2 divided by 100 then consider the second loop here they are given one condition galvanometer g shows no deflection then current it will be zero in this loop that one you have to remember then here current i it will be zero this is the direction of the current then here starting from this one this is consider this loop then this is the direction of the current then here the path it will move in this direction current it will move in this direction then here path direction from positive to negative terminal of the cell therefore it is become negative vb then here the current it is moving in this direction the path it will be downward therefore the direction of the current and direction of the path both are in opposite direction therefore plus then here resistance v is equal to i r according to that formula 100 into i is 100 i this is a closed path it will be zero here in the case of a galvanometer i will be zero then its value everything it will become zero then vb it will be equal to shift this side i into 100 then you know the value of i i value is 2 by 100 into 100 100 and 100 get cancelled therefore the value of vp it will be equal to 2 volt let us discuss the formula for electrical energy and electrical power first case battery is discharging the current is discharging from the cell therefore in this case the power it will be loss power loss it will be equal to v into i second case battery is charging here the cell it is getting extra current therefore the power it will be gain in this case power gain it will be equal to v into i resistor energy is dissipated energy it will lose from the resistor here resistor it will lose the current then power it will be loss it will be equal to v into i this is the one form in place of e substitute i r then i into i it will become i square r this is the second form of power then third form substitute in place of i v by r then v into v it will be, it will be equal to v square divided by r when you if you want to calculate power if you know any two variables then out of these three equation any one equation you can use to solve the problems let us find out the formula in energy dissipated in resistor power it will be equal to work done divided by time work done it will be equal to power into time then work done is nothing but the energy energy it will be equal to power into time electrical energy it will be equal to p into t you know p is equal to v v i into t using ohm's law you can write this equation in terms of three forms then in place of v substitute i r then i into i i square r t then in place of i substitute v by r then v into v v square divided by r t these three forms you have to remember when you are calculating electrical energy in different forms then it will help the next one common and commercial unit of electrical energy is kilowatt hour kilowatt is power power is time then kilo means 10 to the power of 3 watt means joule per second into hour means 60 minutes 60 second 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 it will get cancelled then 3600 into 10 to the power of 3 joule this one you can write in another form 3.6 into 10 to the power of 6 joule this is the value of 1 kilowatt hour 3.6 into 10 to the power of 6 joule this one you have to remember let us study about fuse wire 
fuse wire is a protective device based on heating effect of current otherwise it will protect the device even from short circuit also then this it will be it will this it will work on the principle of joule's law here inside the fuse you are having a fuse wire and this fuse is connected to another home appliances when high voltage of current when it pass inside the fuse then this fuse wire it is made up of a lead and tin because of heating effect of current this fuse wire it will get heated up then it will it will get melted then here if it is melted then it is disconnect the connection between the another home appliances if high voltage of current if it pass through the fuse it will get disconnected then another home appliances they will get protected then here fuse wire is made up of a material of high resistance and low melting point because of uh, having high resistance and low melting point this fuse wire it will get melted very easily it will get heated up very easily when high voltage of current when it is pass inside the fuse wire then ideal material for fuse wire is an alloy of lead and tin this fuse wire it is made up of an alloy of lead and tin this also very very important this one also you have to remember then copper can can never be used as a fuse wire because copper is a good conductor of electricity if you use copper as a fuse wire then easily it will allow the Uh, high voltage of current easily it will allow to pass through it then another devices in our home they will get damage to protect that one we will use a fuse wire it is made up of an alloy of lead and tin this is the use of a fuse wire in the fuse let us solve one multiple choice question fuse wire is a wire of option a high resistance and high melting point option b high resistance and low melting point option c low resistance and low melting point option d low resistance and high melting point option b is the correct answer fuse wire is a wire of high resistance and low melting point power rating of an appliances here this is the bulb it is having 220 volt then 100 watt power then here at 220 it consumes 100 joule per second of energy two information you can calculate here one first one resistance second one is maximum current you know the formula power it will be equal to v square divided by r then r shift if you replace these two then r it will be equal to v square divided by p you know voltage is 220 v square means v into v 220 into 220 divided by power is 100 watt then 0 0 get cancelled 22 into 22 you will get 484 ohm r it will be equal to resistance it will be equal to 484 ohm resistance it does not depends upon the current and voltage resistance it will depends upon the length area and type of the material and it depends upon the temperature pressure like that resistance it does not depends upon the current and voltage then second you can calculate maximum current you know the formula power it will be equal to voltage into current then i maximum if you alter this equation alter this formula then i maximum it will be equal to power divided by voltage power is 100 watt voltage is 220 00 it will get cancel then i maximum it will be equal to 100 divided by 22 let us study the formula here to find out the power when the bulbs they are connected in series and parallel combination here you are having three bulbs b1 b2 b3 and power p1 p2 p3 and it is it is having the voltage 220 volt each bulb having the same voltage 220 and resistance it will be difference r1 r2 r3 and consider here three bulbs they are connected through a voltage 220 volt this formula is valid when when the three bulbs when they are having the same voltage 220 volt when they are connected with the same voltage 
in that case only this formula is valid 1 by p equivalent it will be equal to 1 by p1 plus 1 by p2 plus 1 by p3 same three bulbs when they are connected in parallel with the same volt 220 volt then formula p equivalent p equivalent it will be equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 here these two formula we can use when three bulbs having the same voltage it is connected to the same voltage 220 volt then here you can observe the second formula p equivalent it will be equal to p square divided by r equivalent this always valid whether these three bulbs having different voltage if it is connected to different voltage also this formula it will be valid this is valid in the, all the cases in series combination again p equivalent it will be e square it will be equal to v square divided by r equivalent this also valid in all the cases if if you are connect the connected the bulb in either series or parallel combination leads and bridge this bridge it will work on the principle of kirchhoff rule you know the kirchhoff rule first one is junction rule second one is the loop rule junction rule at any junction the sum of the current entering the junction it will be equal to sum of the current leaving the junction that is the junction rule second one is loop rule the algebraic sum of change in potential around any closed loop involving resistors and cells in the loop is zero already in detail you are studied about kirchhoff rules Wheatstone bridge. Let us consider the construction of an Wheatstone bridge. Here the Wheatstone bridge it contains four resistors R1, R2, R3, R4. Then these resistors they are connected in a closed loop and here R1 resistor is opposite to R4. Then R2 resistor is uh, opposite to R3. Then AC is the diagonally opposite junction. Then across the junction connect a cell then here bd is the another pair of, of diagonally opposite junction then across this one connect a galvanometer here r is the resistor ac is the battery arm then g is the galvanometer then here this it will represent a closed loop according to kirchhoff junction rule here consider at the point d as a junction because here three wires they are meeting at a single point therefore this one we can consider as a junction at the point d otherwise at the junction d i1 is the current entering the junction then i3 is the current leaving the junction therefore i1 it will be equal to i3 according to kirchhoff junction rule the amount of current entering the junction it will be equal to amount of current leaving the junction therefore here at the junction d i1 it will be equal to i3 consider at the junction b i2 is the current entering into the junction then i4 is the current leaving the junction then according to kirchhoff junction rule i2 it will be equal to i4 let us consider these equations are equation 1 and 2 let us apply Kirchhoff loop rule here. Sum of the voltage across the loop is 0. Here consider this. This is the loop AD, BA. Then here the voltage across this loop it will be 0. That one you have to apply here. For the loop AD, BA. Then here first you have to consider the direction of the path. Here the direction of the path it will be anti-clockwise direction AD, BA in this direction. Then you have to find the voltage across the resistor and in the galvanometer also. Then here first one the voltage across this resistor V it will be equal to IR, I1 into R1. Then here the direction of the current and the direction of the path both they are in same direction therefore here we have to use negative sign then the current inside the galvanometer it will be zero then again at this resistor the voltage it will be i2 r2 the, then here the direction of the current it will be in this direction the direction of the path it will be opposite to the direction of the current when both they are opposite to each other then here i2 r2 it will become positive then again 
the sum of the total voltage it will be zero then i1 r1 it will be equal to i2 r2 consider the ratio of i1 by i2 it will be equal to r2 by i1 consider this is as equation 3 apply the same rule for the loop c b d c here also the path direction it will be in anti clockwise direction first the voltage across the resistor r4 it will be i4 r4 here the loop otherwise the path direction and direction of the current both they are they will be opposite direction here therefore here we can write positive i4 r4 plus the current inside the galvanometer it will be zero then at this point the direction of the current it will be in this direction the direction of the loop also it will be in the same direction Therefore, here negative I3 R3 it will be equal to 0. Then I4 R4 it will be equal to I3 R3. Again, consider the equation 1 and equation 2. Substitute the value of I4. Here I4 it will be, I, uh, it will be equal to I2 here. Then I3 it will be equal to I1 here. Substitute these two values in this equation. Then again, if you consider the ratio, it will become I1 by I2, it will be equal to R4 by R3. Consider this is as equation 4. Consider the equation 3 and 4 together. You can identify here left hand side in both the equation, it will be equal. Then you can equate right hand side. Then R2 by R1, it will be equal to R4 by R3. This arrangement of resistor through which current reading in galvanometer is zero. This type we will call it as a balanced bridge or Wheatstone bridge. Then use of Wheatstone bridge. Wheatstone bridge and balanced condition is used to determine the value of an unknown resistance in the circuit. Consider here R4. This is the unknown resistance. If we want to calculate the value of this R4, then we will use this formula. R4, it will be equal to R3 into R2 divided by R1. Using this formula, easily you can find out the value of an R4 resistor. Meter bridge or slide wire bridge. This meter bridge, it will works on the principle of Wheatstone bridge. According to the principle of Wheatstone bridge, you know the ratio of P by Q, it will be equal to the ratio of R by S. Then here the galvanometer, it will not show any deflection. Therefore, the current through this galvanometer, it will be zero. Otherwise, the current in the branch XY, it will be zero because the potential difference between PQ, it will be equal to potential difference between RS. Both the potential, they will be equal. Therefore, the current through galvanometer, it will show zero. Then this meter bridge we will use to measure an unknown resistance. And compare to unknown resistance, we will use the meter bridge. Potentiometer. Potentiometer is a device which measures the potential difference more accurate than voltmeter. Potentiometer, that is the device used to measure the potential difference. But this potentiometer, it will measure accurately than voltmeter. That one you have to remember. Then it works on the principle of null point method. Null point method means no current in the circuit and do not withdraw any current from the original circuit. Null point method means no current it will flows in the circuit and we are not withdrawing any current from the circuit, original circuit. Hence it is more accurate than voltmeter. Maybe this one they may ask in the exam. Why potentiometer? Why it will measure more accurately potential difference compared to voltmeter? Because in potentiometer we will use null point method. Means no current in the circuit and we will, we will not withdraw any current from the circuit. That is the reason potentiometer it will measures more accurately potential difference rather than voltmeter but voltmeter is used more often due to its small size and convenience then 
potentiometer is used to why we will use potentiometer first one determine emf of a cell second one compare emf of two cells third one determine internal resistance of a cell we will use potentiometer let us consider the construction of a potentiometer a potentiometer consists of wire of ab of uniform cross section generally 4 to 10 meter long fixed on a wooden board here this is the potentiometer this potentiometer is having a uniform cross section and generally length 4 to 10 meter long and fixed in a wooden board this we can't keep it straight as it is because 10 meter is so long we can't carry like that therefore we will own the potentiometer wire then we will keep in a wooden board then here this uh, this potentiometer it contain a driving cell or accumulator cell here then here the in which unknown unknown device you have to find the potential difference you have to keep here unknown potential difference here one thing you have to remember here this driving cell potential e naught should be always greater than this unknown potential difference e naught should be always greater than even this one you have to remember then potential gradient it is indicated by k k it will be equal to v wire divided by l wire potential difference of uh, potential difference of the wire then here length of the wire simply we can consider as k potential gradient it will be equal to v by l let us discuss the use of a potentiometer first one determining emf of a cell this is the potentiometer then here it contains a cell this cell we can call it as driving cell or accumulator cell then here at this part the cell whose potential difference you have to find out it has to connect at this place before connecting this key it should be open after connecting this cell you have to close the key after closing the key this j is the open end of the wire you have to move the wire like that this galvanometer it has to show no deflection you have to move this wire j on the potentiometer at one particular point the galvanometer it will not show any deflection at that point the current i it will become zero throughout the circuit if you are consider this place or if you consider lower the circuit also i it will be zero at this at this point the potential difference across lower circuit it will be equal to potential difference across the terminal aj potential difference across the lower circuit it will be equal to potential difference across the terminal aj then this potential difference across the lower circuit we can consider as a emf of the cell e it will be equal to you know from the potential gradient k it will be equal to v by l then v it will be equal to k into l substitute in place of v you will get v it will be equal to k into l then final equation e it will be equal to k into l this is nothing but this emf of the cell it will be equal to k into l from this equation you can find out the emf of this emf of a unknown cell two points you have to remember when you want to find out a emf of a cell battery emf e naught should be greater than cell emf e naught it should be always greater than e that is the first point second point the cell positive terminal should be linked to the battery positive terminal here this is the battery positive terminal always battery positive terminal always it is connected to cell positive cell positive terminal and battery negative terminal is always connected to cell negative terminal these two points you have to remember second use of potentiometer comparing emf of two cells here you are having two cells having emf e1 e2 
if you want to compare the emf of two cells let us consider the condition here here you are having the two keys k1 k2 first condition if k2 is open if k1 is closed then you have to adjust the length in the galvanometer it has to show no deflection then the balancing length let us consider as l1 then according to the equation e is equal to kl already you know here the emf is even it will be equal to k into the balancing length l1 this is the first condition then second one if k2 is closed k1 if it is this one is open then you have to adjust the length like that the galvanometer it has show no deflection in this case e2 it will be equal to kl2 because the balancing length is l2 then when you compare these two equation if you consider the ratio then e1 by e2 it will be equal to kk it will get cancel then it will be equal to l1 by l2 in this way you can compare the emf of two cells next one determining internal resistance of a cell how to find out the value of a small r here consider the first case if s is open then there is no current in the lower circuit this part we will consider as a lower circuit when s is open there is no current flow in the lower circuit at this case in this case at this point i it will be zero and here at this point also i it will be zero you have to adjust the balancing length l1 such that the galvanometer it shows no deflection here at this point the current it flows only in this part therefore emf of the cell it will be equal to potential difference across a into j potential difference across aj it will be equal to emf of the cell because the current it will flow only this portion therefore emf of the cell it will be equal to potential difference across the terminal aj potential difference it will be emf emf it will be equal to k into l1 you, you know the formula then consider the second case if s is closed then current it will flow in the lower circuit again you have to balance the length consider the balancing length l2 then this galvanometer it will show no deflection at this case potential difference across the terminal aj it will be equal to terminal voltage in the lower lower part of the circuit therefore potential difference it will be equal to terminal voltage you know terminal voltage v it will be e, v it will be equal to equal to k into l2 you know the formula to find out small r r it will be equal to e by v minus 1 into capital r substitute the value of e and v here then k k it will get cancelled then small r it will be equal to l1 by l2 minus 1 into capital r in this way easily you can find out the internal resistance of a cell thanks for listening my class send me your valuable feedback